Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body, is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it's a renewing system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. We want to help you change your life today. If you're on a medication, you want to wean yourself off, or you have a loved one or friend or family member, and you want to wean wean them off of a prescription drug, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health, questions or something you may have heard about or read about, we can help you, 844-236-6010. Likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team and start yourself a longevity business, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website, and you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the website as well, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. Both have blog posts as well as videos. We just did a video on acne at criticalhealthnews.com, probably about I don't know, 15 or so videos up and do them every week, criticalhealthnews.com, also pharmacistben.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our skin health products, truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel or our truth serum made with nearly 80%, that's ridiculous, folks, nearly 80% premium lipophilic vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no waxes, no fillers, no water, no nothing that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any truth treatment products. They're ideal for hypo, they're ideal for uh, sensitive skin, they're hypoallergenic, they're ideal for older skin or fragile skin. You can check out all the products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side once again, continuing on with the ketogenic diet, continue on with hormone health, fats, all as it regards the skin. Last we spoke, we were talking about veggie drinks, which are a powerful, powerful way to access nutrition, nutritional value. They're delicious. If you do it right, you want to combine your veggies, especially use spices, especially use Celtic sea salt with your, when you're using your spices. Whenever you blend something or spin electrolytes and water in a vortex, you get a lot of electrical energy. When fluids are combined with electrical substances, electrolytes, potassium, sodium, magnesium, and chloride that are all found in veggies. And if you add Celtic sea salt, you get even more of these electrical minerals. And then when you spin the thing around, you generate an electrical, uh, an electrical current. This electrical current is going to be generated just by stirring with a spoon. But if you blend it really fast in a, in a Vitamix, you get a super amped up electrical, electrical drink. And especially if you add spices and especially if you add uh, salt, which in and of themselves are energetic. So not only do you get nutrients and not only do you get fiber when you drink your freshly made veggie juice, but you also get electricity, electrical energy. You're drinking electrical energy. You can actually see the electrical energy in a veggie juice. When you put your veggie juice on the counter after you make it fresh, it's one homogenous unit. But over time, you'll notice that the uh, that the uh, the solids in the veggie juice will sink to the bottom, and the liquid fr- the liquid fraction will be on the top. 
That's a manifestation of the dissipation of the electrical energy. When a fresh juice is made, all the components are held together in this homogeneous mixture, mixture by electromagnetic energy, by electronics. Over time, that electrical energy dissipates, and you can actually see the components begin to settle out. That's why you want to drink your veggie juice fresh. There's more electrical energy in it. Not that you're not going to get uh, some nutritional value from a juice that's been sitting around. You're definitely going to get uh, nutritional value, value to the extent that it's been sitting around, of course. Keep it in the fridge if you can't finish it up. I like making smaller doses or, or smaller drinks. Maybe a couple stalks of celery and a quarter cucumber and a quarter, a quarter um, t uh, tomato and maybe a little tiny little piece of onion. I love onion, but if you put too much onion in your juice, it's going to be hard to drink. There's a tiny little touch of onion, a tiny little touch of garlic, and you just make like one dose. If you make too much, put it in a mason jar and, and seal it up. You'll still get nutritional value over the course of days. It, it will, the, the nutritional value will dissipate over time, but you'll still get some nutritional value. You'll certainly get your minerals, and you'll get the, your B vitamins and your vitamin C. You just won't get as much nutrition. That's why you want to do it fresh. It's not that you won't get any nutrition, but you just won't get as much. Something else very interesting happens when you eat or when you drink a veggie juice or when you eat a salad for that matter. There's a psychological effect. It becomes harder to eat crappy food. Crappy food just doesn't taste as good. Try yourself. Make a celery, to, uh, cucumber, tomato juice, throw in a little onion or beet or whatever your favorite veggies are. Add some salt and pepper and your favorite spices. Blend it up. Drink it down. And then put some Pop-Tarts in front of you or some Coke or Mountain Dew, or whatever you like. And you're going to notice that there's a little bit of resistance to eating it or drinking your soda. A little bit of resistance that you ordinarily wouldn't have. Now, you can muscle through that resistance and eat your Pop-Tart anyway, and most people or many people will do that. But you're going to notice that there is a difference between a truly nourishing, healthy food or healthy drink and one that only satisfies the brain, one that only satisfies the taste buds. This is what a a junk food is. Junk food satisfies the taste buds and satisfies the brain, but it doesn't satisfy the body. On the other hand, truly nourishing foods satisfy the body, and you'll notice this distinction. There's going to be a kind of like a wall around the Mountain Dew or the Pop-Tarts. And as I say, many times we'll just bust through that wall and go for the Pop-Tart, but at least you'll notice that there's a distinction between a, a quality food and a non-quality food or a junk food. There's another advantage when it comes to the ketogenic diet anyway, when you're doing veggies. The veggies are the ideal ketogenic food and that's because of their fiber. Fiber is incredibly filling and that makes veggie juices super satisfying. This can make veggie juices a very effective appetite suppressant, even more so than salads or veggies because, uh, or straight veggies, because in a juice, you can drink more of it and you can drink it faster. It takes you a while to do a salad, but you can guzzle down a veggie juice in a minute. And that can be super uh, satisfying and have a really powerful appetite suppressant effect, especially if you do it first thing in the morning and especially if you do it before meals. Got to make sure you keep the fiber, though. The fiber is the key here. Juice extractors, the typical juicers, don't, don't get you the fiber, and that's unfortunate. And by the way, that's especially problematic with fruits because the fiber is important for keeping the sugar from entering into the blood too rapidly. I'm not a, you know, fruits are okay. There's some good stuff in fruits, certainly. It's not like that they're, they're poison foods. So they're certainly not junk foods, but fruit juice is really dangerous because in a typical fruit juice, you don't get the fiber, you just get the sugar, and you drink it down, and the sugar goes boom, right through the intestine into the blood. There's nothing to slow down the release of that sugar. The fiber is super important in fruits for keeping sugar from entering into the blood too rapidly. And if you're doing apple juice, which most people do, or pear juice, or whatever kind of fruit juice you're doing from a regular juicer, you're not going to get the fiber. That's why you want to use a blender, like a Vitamix, a high-powered blender to maintain the fiber. And this not only keeps the sugar from entering into the blood too quickly, but it makes it a more satisfying product. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny, 442-36-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. 
Visit GCNlive.com today. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or skin health issues or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, now's the time to call 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. Pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our truth treatment products, if you don't want to deal with preservatives, if you don't want to deal with fragrance, if you don't want to deal with wax and filler and any ingredients that you don't need and that your skin doesn't need and that your skin has to detoxify, don't you want 100% active and functional ingredients when you're using the skincare product? Don't you want high concentrations of active ingredients over smatterings, which is what you get in most skincare products? Check out truthtreatments.com, especially check out our retinol 5% gel. Okay. So, we're talking veggie juices. Veggies are the ideal ketogenic food for lots of reasons, especially the fiber. They're very satisfying. They're psychologically satisfying. It's harder to eat crappy food when you drink a veggie juice. I like veggie juices over salads. It's a lot easier to get a whole bunch of veggies and a whole bunch of fiber, and they're quick, and they're super tasty. If you have leftover veggie juice and you stick it in the fridge, it's still nutritionally valuable, and you can turn it into soup. You can turn it into veggie soup. If you make a tomato-based veggie juice, it makes a great sauce. You can take your tomato-based veggie juice, stick it in, the, in a mason jar, stick it in the fridge, and the next time you need a sauce, you can use it as a sauce. You can uh, take a tomato and then grate some fresh tomato, add it in there. I have a pressure cooker. I just use it, my extra veggie juice, when I have a tomato-based veggie juice, or really any, any veggie juice, I just use it as, a, as the liquid for a piece of fish in a pressure cooker. And then the juice, if you have leftover uh, soup or leftover liquid from your pressure cooker, then it has a nice kind of seafood flavor to it. Super delicious. There's so many things you could do for the ketogenic diet and just for losing weight and for, for uh, 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 as an appetite suppressant that are healthy and that are super, super tasty. The combination of veggies and salt and flavorings is unbelievably tasty and unbelievably healthy. And not the least of, uh, there's a lot of reasons why this stuff is healthy for you, but to me, the fiber is just, it's invaluable. Fiber is unbelievably important. Fiber is technically a type of carbohydrate, but because the body doesn't have the enzymes that you need to digest it, it doesn't really affect your carbohydrate load. And that's the difference. If you see, look on uh, nutrition, nutrition supplement facts on, on processed foods sometimes, you'll see total carbs and then you'll see net carbs. And the difference between your total carbohydrates and net carbohydrates is fiber. Total carbs count the fiber. Net carbs do not. Net carbs can be considered to be the sugar. Fiber is actually not really sugar. It's a carbohydrate that's not a sugar because it doesn't get digested. It just leaves your body. And the fact that it leaves your body, the fact that fiber leaves your body without being digested really makes it important for the digestive system, for the intestines. So not only is fiber super filling, but it also has wonderful intestinal health benefits. For one thing, fiber functions as something called a prebiotic. Not a probiotic, but a prebiotic. Probiotics are the actual bacteria. Prebiotics is a term that refers to substances that make the environment hospitable for probiotics, hospitable for the bacteria. Prebiotics is ingesting substances that can sustain the probiotics. And fiber is one of the most powerful, most important of the bacterial-friendly prebiotic nutritional components you could ever eat. Fiber also has a cleansing effect on the intestine. It supports detoxification. It's like a, it's kind of like the straws on a broom. It helps sweep out digestive wastes from the intestine. And this sweeping out function, this sweeping broom-like function can also help gut bacteria. For one thing, this is important, 
fiber can actually help us eliminate antibiotics and this can have a supportive effect on the on the probiotics on the good bacteria after we ingest a after we use a course of therapy say a two week or, or a four week course of antibiotic therapy sometimes the antibiotic uh, antibiotic residual or, or little little pieces of antibiotics can actually stick to the intestines they don't get cleaned out effectively these residual antibiotic elements are one of the reasons that people will still have bowel problems a couple of days or even a week after they stop their course of antibiotics. They'll still have gas or loose stools even after they're t they stop taking their antibiotics. But if you use fiber-rich veggies and drink your veggie juices while you're taking your antibiotics, perhaps not at the same exact time as the antibiotics, but while you're doing the antibiotic course of therapy. And if you continue doing your fiber-rich veggies when you're done with your antibiotic regimen, you can help reduce or, or uh, prevent even some of these unpleasant digestive symptoms that can occur days or even up to a week or even more sometimes after you uh, finish your antibiotic therapy. Keep in mind, if you're going to start including more fiber in your diet, you want to start low and go slow. Too much fiber taken all at once can cause gas and bloating and loose stools can make you just feel uncomfortable. So you want to start off pretty slowly, if you've, especially if, you haven't, maybe if you've been eating a lot of junk food and you've been eating a lot of processed food and stuff that doesn't have fiber in it. Start off with maybe a teaspoon or a couple of teaspoons of fiber every day. Maybe a small veggie juice or if you're going to do seeds, a couple of teaspoons of seeds and then kind of build yourself up slowly. There's another way, by, uh, by the way, that fiber can help improve detoxification and that involves bile, perhaps the most underappreciated substance in the body. Not underappreciated on this program, we talk about it all the time, but underappreciated in the world of health. We talk a lot about bile as a fat detergent and it is a fat detergent. When we eat food, food gets ground up in the stomach and it gets combined with acid. And then as it leaves the stomach, it leaves the stomach and enters into the intestine as a soupy mass called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. And the soupy mass kind of drops into the small intestine from the stomach. And as soon as it hits the small intestine, as soon as it leaves the stomach and enters into the, into the small intestine, boom, it gets hit with a big blast of bile from the gallbladder, assuming you have a gallbladder. If you don't have a gallbladder, it gets hit with a little squirt of bile from the liver. This, uh, this uh, uh, detergent action of the bile as it the, hits the food in the intestine releases the fats and, and breaks up the fats so that the digestive enzymes can work on them. In this, wa in this fashion, bile plays a critical role in helping the body utilize and access essential fatty acids, fatty vitamins, vitamins D and E and A and K, as well as those all-important phytonutrients like carotenes and flavonoids that all play such an important role in skin health and heart health and keeping blood sugar stable. But bile plays another very important role in the, bi in the body, and this is where fiber comes in. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Our number 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. Also 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Got a search engine up there. If you miss a program or you want to review a specific topic, you can look everything up by our search engines at by the search engine at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you so much for doing that, Peter. That's an awesome website, by the way. Peter has compiled all my websites, which I have multiple blogs and, and uh, various sites, including truthtreatments.com. That's up at uh, benfuchsarchives.com as well. Truthtreatments.com, of course, is our skin health product website. If you're interested in checking out super premium, high-end skin health products made with 100% active and functional ingredients, 100% active and functional ingredients. Folks, you're not going to see that anywhere. 
That's one of the lessons I learned from 30 years in the skincare business is why should anybody have to pay for water and wax and emulsifiers and preservatives and fragrances and silicon? Why should anybody have to pay for ingredients that are just in the product so you can buy the product? That's so unfair. And that's why I came up with the Truth Treatments. 100% active and functional ingredients. All the ingredients in Truth Treatment products are doing something for your skin. All the ingredients in Truth Treatment products are active and functional. And that's why they last so long. Truth Balm will last you four months. Truth Serum will last you three months. Truth Retinol Gel will last you six months. You're not going to see skin health products anywhere like that, not to mention the fact that you get instant results. Reduced, r reduced formation of wrinkles, smoother skin, softer skin. If you use our Omega-6 Healing Cream, you'll notice a dramatically, dramatically uh, change in uh, a rapidity or, or a rapidness in healing. And that's from burns, sunburns, acne scars, or, or preventing acne scars. Once scars form, you're not going to you're not going to be able to do anything topically. But as the as your acne blemish is healing, that's really where you want to prevent the formation of scars, and that's where our, our Omega-6 Healing Cream, as well as our Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Truth Retinol Gel come in. TruthTreatments.com, check them out. TruthTreatments.com, we'll also have a blog up there as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let me say a couple more things about bile. We'll, we'll continue talking about that tomorrow. I'm, I'm a big fan of bile. Bile is an amazing, amazing, underappreciated substance in the body. A couple of weeks ago, we talked to a nurse, and uh, she was completely unaware that uh, that bile plays a major role in cardiovascular health. That's because of cholesterol. Bile is one of the ways the body excretes cholesterol. Body is one of the ways that bile is one of the ways the body excretes poisons and toxins. Bile is one of the major ways that the body absorbs fats or utilizes fats from foods. Keep your gallbladder. If you have liver disease, you're going to have a bile problem. Bile recir recirculates through the body. Well, you know what? We'll continue talking about bile tomorrow. There's so much we could say about bile. There's also a very important relationship between fiber and bile. The more fiber you eat, the healthier your bile is going to be. Okay, we'll continue our discussion on bile, fiber, the ketogenic diet. Talk about some supplements that you could use, that you should use if you're going to go ketogenic. Some supplements that you could use to improve ketogenesis. And we'll talk tomorrow about a very interesting component of fiber that can help reduce cancer, especially breast cancer and prostate cancer. We'll do that in the coming days on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Robert in Texas. Good morning, Robert. What's going on? Yes, sir. Uh, I've got information, and uh, I've been taking uh, ibuprofen and uh, red barno vein, red vein barno. And white willow bark kind of before I go to sleep now, and it helps me do about three, four to five hours where I don't have any pain in my feet. I'm not quite understanding, Robert. I heard you got inflammation in your feet. You're taking ibuprofen, and then what else are you taking? I'm taking it's uh, over the counter. It's, uh, it's a herb. It's called red barn oak. Okay. okay, I don't know what that is, but white. I, I'm not sure. Medieval. Okay, well, I'm not quite sure what that is, but, but uh, white willow is a source of salicylic acid, kind of like an aspirin derivative, or, or aspirin is a derivative of salicylic acid. Mm -hmm. These are just general anti-inflammatories, and they'll give you some temporary relief, but we've got to figure out why you got the inflammation in the first place. So first of all, did you do anything mechanically? Did you, did you fall or step on something? Or, well, I've been having this for nine years. I said it's neuropathy, but you know, okay. Kind of okay, that's what I was going to ask you. It's more of a chemical issue than a mechanical issue. You. And this is very common. The feet and the hands are, are located at the ends of the body, basically the periphery of the body. So when you have a circulatory problem, these are going to be the areas that don't get blood, the first areas that don't get blood, the toes and the fingers and the hands and the feet. Does that make sense? They're on the ends yes. of your body, basically. Yes, sir. And this is very common when you have dirty blood, especially when the blood is dirty from sugar. Sugar and inflammation in the feet and the hands, this is called, or, or neuropathy, tingling or pain in the feet and hands go hand in hand. Elevated blood sugar. So, how old are you, Robert? I'm uh, 69. Okay, good. That's, uh, you're uh, a very likely candidate for blood sugar issues. Is, how's your weight? How's your height to weight? Got some, uh, got some belly fat going much. on? Just be honest here. Got some belly fat. 
Okay, so you guys, so you're dealing with some blood sugar problems. First thing you want to do is start to stabilize that. Now, I'm not going to tell you about the foods and the good foods and the bad foods because you probably know what you should be eating and shouldn't be eating. But I will tell you that when you eat the wrong kinds of foods, and those are going to be foods that turn into sugar quickly, cereals and flour and bread and fruit juice and desserts and soda pop, what you want to do... You are not. You are? I'm a candy person. <laughs> okay. When you eat those things, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to beat you up about that. I'm not going to, you know what you should do and shouldn't do. But when you do eat the candy, drink a lot of water after you do it. And make sure you're sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine throughout the day. For anybody out there listening who's got blood sugar problems but you can't get off of the candy, you know, and you know you should, fine. Stay on the candy. Do whatever you, you know, do whatever you like to do. But after you eat the sweets, make sure you're diluting your blood sugar, number one, and then make sure you're getting all of your electrical nutrients and your sugar metabolizing nutrients throughout the day. That means sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. After meals, you want to make sure you're doing the sweeties. That's chromium and vanadium. That will also help your body process sugar. And try to start including more fiber in your diet, as we've been include, as we've been talking about here for the uh, today and a little bit last uh, on our last program, and we'll continue talking. Fiber can help slow down the release of sugar. So. If you're eating candy with your meals or at the end of your meals, before you eat the candy or before you go for your dessert, have a little, have some veggies or maybe some veggie juice or maybe grind up some flax seeds. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Grind up some flax seeds and do a spoonful in water and then have, have your dessert or have your sweets and that will slow up the release of sugar. In other words, you're going to be focusing on stabilizing your blood sugar. Another thing you could do to wean yourself off of sugar, if you so desire, or at least to eat less sugar, is to include more protein in your meals, especially whey protein, W-H-E-Y. You can get natural factors whey, which is a good organic whey, or you can use the, the slender FX from longevity, or any kind of protein, even if it's meat protein or fish protein. All of that will tend to uh, cut into your sugar cravings, particularly an amino acid, called called glutamine g l u t a m i n e glutamine maybe do a half a teaspoon twice a day especially before you're going to be snacking on sweets or or before you're going to uh before you do your dessert at the end of your meals you can get glutamine powder pretty much at any health food store glutamine is also found in whey protein another mineral or nutrient that's important for uh, sugar metabolism is selenium you may want to include 400 to 600 micrograms of selenium in your diet or in your uh, nutritional supplement program and don't forget the zinc mega important for helping the body stabilize and utilize sugar 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate there's lots more things you could do don't uh, one more last thing I'll tell you is the omega-3 fatty acids uh, from your ultimate EFAs are wonderfully anti-inflammatory and can also help you with your blood sugar Robert I got to go thank you so much that's some good information thank for you. you and good luck with everything you, all right brother take care all right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll come back with more of your phone calls right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let us go to Ron in Pennsylvania. Good morning. How you doing, Ron? Doing well today. And yourself? I'm doing good. Thanks for, thanks for asking. How's it go? How can we help you today? All right. Blood pressure is the issue. Okay. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. If you go to, uh, are you on any medication, by the way? Well, I'm trying the niacin, and it and I don't get along real well. What happened? You get a little flush? You get flush, get itchy. Okay, that's called the niacin flush. It's not uncommon. What you want to do is go get yourself some timed release niacin. That's what I purchased. And you still got the flush? Yes. How much? What's your dose? Should be about 250, because these are oh. 500 milligrams that I cut in half. Take, a, take 100. Go buy yourself 100 milligrams. Okay. Okay, and that ought to help. Take it with a little bit of food, too. Oh, yes. Are you, are you doing that anyway? Yes. Okay. The flush is not a bad thing, first of all. It's uncomfortable. How long does it last you? Uh, 250 milligrams last me maybe a half an hour or so. Okay. The flush isn't a bad thing. If you go down to 100 or even 50 milligrams, that should take care of that. And keep in mind, the flush isn't a bad thing. You may Even if you have a little tiny little bit of flushing, it shouldn't be anything that's un miserably makes you miserable. It's amazing for lowering blood pressure, though. So I would stay on it and always take your entire B complex with your niacin. Don't just take niacin. It's important when you take one B complex, one of the B vitamins, that you take the entire complex. But here's the thing about hypertension and high blood pressure. Okay, in addition to uh, metabolic issues like blood sugar and dirty blood and all the things we talk about on this program, it's a major, uh, a classic sign of distress, of 
bodily stress. So what you want to do with your blood pressure is you want to calm, with elevated blood pressure, is you want to calm the body down. Anything you could do to calm the body down is going to lower your blood pressure. Even sitting in a hot bath will lower your blood pressure. Uh, hot showers will lower your blood pressure. But the, the, the easiest way to do it is to practice slow, deep breathing. And what you want to do, Ron, is you want to experience this for yourself using a, a, a blood pressure cuff at home and just sit on the couch and take your blood pressure and then, take your blood, uh, and then uh, practice slow, deep breathing for about five minutes and then take your blood pressure again and you'll see how fast your blood pressure drops. Relax the body is the easiest and healthiest way to lower your blood pressure. Now, when you're doing your deep breathing, you want to do it deeply and slowly. That's very important, deep and slow. And you want to try to take about 10 or 15 seconds on the inhale, go all the way down to your belly. You'll, you may notice for many people anyway, they'll notice that the breath tends to stop around the chest area. What you want to do is you want to force the breath even lower, all the way down to your belly button or even, even lower to the bottom of your body if you can. And when you first start doing it, it's going to be difficult to do. So you want to kind of practice it, going about 10 to 15 seconds on the inhale and then the exhale, this is where your blood pressure is going to drop. It's on the exhalation. So as you're exhaling, practice, make sure you're uh, doing it as slow as possible, emptying out all the oxygen or emptying out all the air as completely as you can from the lungs. Even making a sound if you have to, like a ah uh, kind of sound. Your blood pressure will drop like a stone after five minutes. And if you do it every day, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, you're going to notice such a dramatic decrease in your blood pressure that you're going to have to, if you're on medication, which it doesn't sound like you are, but anybody listening who's on medication, you're going to notice that you have to reduce the dose of your medication. And oh, by the way, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, which are the old standbys for elevated blood pressure, hypertension, are incredibly nasty drugs. Even the diuretics, which are considered less toxic, those can cause you to lose minerals, particularly electrolytes, which are important for lowering blood pressure. The next thing you want to do is make sure you're keeping your blood sugar stable blood sugar, elevated blood sugar represents an emergency to the body and that will raise blood pressure. So you got to do all the things a diabetic has to do like we talked with our last caller using nutrients for lowering blood pressure, blood sugar and then also reducing your, the sugar content of your meals and then also using more fiber. And then lastly, there's also some great supplements that you can use that will lower blood pressure. Magnesium is probably the most important. Make sure you're using a couple thousand milligrams of magnesium every day. Uh, also, the electrolytes, as I mentioned, potassium and calcium and sodium, in addition to magnesium, they can have a, a blood pressure lowering effect. All the B vitamins can help in addition to niacin. And then don't forget your EFAs, particularly your omega-3 EFAs. Get yourself on the Healthy Start Pack. Uh, and uh, part of the Healthy Start Pack, of course, is your ultimate EFAs. You'll get your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which will give you your Bs and your electrolytes. You'll get your Beyond OsteoFX, which will get you your magnesium. And then you'll get your omega-3 fatty acids, which will get you that, that, the wonderful antihypertensive effects of essential EF, of EFAs, essential fatty acids. All right, Ron. There's lots you could do, and nobody should deal with elevated blood pressure if they don't if they don't uh, if they don't want it, and they don't, nobody needs to be on a prescription drug to drop their blood pressure if they don't want to do that. Because there's so many great strategies. All right, man. Thank you so much for your call, Ron. Hope we helped you out, buddy. Have a good day. All right. Okay, Andre in Boston. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Hey, Ben. How are you? Uh, love the show. I've been listening for about the last four years. Oh man, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> And I always preach the gospel of Ben. So you can... uh -huh, good deal. The gospel of good nutrition, not the gospel of Ben. Don't, don't put my name on there. The gospel of good nutrition. Um, I hear you. So here's the thing. My, I have a daughter. She's 15 months old. Um, okay. Breastfed, relatively great health, non-vaccinated, all of that. Um, okay. Lately, she's been developing heat rash. Now, I know some people say that it's, you know, uh, being allergic to the sun, but this is happening at night when she's sleeping from sweat. Why do you call it heat rash, just for curiosity's sake? Um, I, I've, I've looked up w what the pattern of bumps look like. It looks just like little milia, like uh, prickly heat. Okay. It looks just like that. So it's, okay. it, it But it's not like necessarily, it's not like she's getting hot or anything. Her body's hot, well, but it's it, not like it, she's... Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's after she gets very active, she's running around, or if at night when she's sleeping... Okay. Uh, she'll develop, and it's only under the clothes. It's not anywhere else. Got it. So okay. Wherever she's sweating. 
Okay, so heat rash is typically going to occur when, when there's humidity or there's moisture, as you say, and it is very common in infants. Here's the thing. When you have a rash that occurs spontaneously, there's some kind of instability in a topical rash, a skin rash. There's some kind of instability in the skin. And instability in the skin typically means some kind of lack of nutrition. Something's missing in the skin, and usually it involves fats and fatty vitamins. Now, because of the difficult, because of the, the inherent difficulty everybody has, even adults have in absorbing fats, in combination with the fact that children or babies have an immature or premature digestive system, it's very likely that she's got some kind of fat issue essential fatty acid deficiency typically. Now I'm assuming her bowel movements and her digestive system is okay. She's not colicky and she doesn't have loose stools or anything like that, correct? She's, she's, uh, ever since she's been born, she's only been mildly sick twice and she's never oh. had an ear infection. Ever, How about constipation so. or diarrhea or anything like that or, or, or no. colicky? Not anything like that? No, bowel movements are fine. Again, she's Good. fully 100% breastfed and, uh, you know, I, I do well, minerals and I try to give it to her as well, so... Okay, and mom doesn't have any allergies or anything like that? Any food allergies in mom or digestive issues in mom? She did have digestive issues, which with your help, we did correct. Um, But she is a heavy coffee drinker, and she does breastfeed, and so I was reading that. There that can have it, that can be an issue, absolutely, because the baby's getting the caffeine too, and that can definitely be an issue. But here's what I'd be doing. She's still breastfeeding? She is. Okay, have mom start supplementing with high doses of EFAs. I, she's okay. probably already doing some EFAs, I'm assuming, but just up the dose on the EFAs. Make sure mom is supplementing with zinc if she's not already, 50 milligrams a day of zinc. Between the zinc and the essential fatty acids, you sh- that, might be, that might be all you need to stabilize the baby's skin. I, uh, also, she's not already doing 20,000 international units, mom that is, 20,000 international units a day of vitamin A. Make sure she's doing that. Have mom become very, very vigilant to her digestive symptoms because if anything's getting into that milk, that's going to affect baby's skin. And then also uh, good bacteria, probiotics. In addition to supplementing probiotics, make sure mom is doing fermented foods to get added bacteria as well as good fiber. We'll talk about fiber in the skin tomorrow a little bit. So make sure she's getting her fiber. Mom might also want to grind up some seeds and use flax seeds as well. There's some components in flax seeds that can come out in the milk that can also be helpful for the baby. Mom might also want to be supplementing with iodine if she's not already. Get get her some iodorol uh, and have her start supplementing with uh, iodorol. And then last but most certainly not least when it comes to skin health issues, when it comes to uh, baby uh, when it comes to uh, mom, uh, milk, breastfed, uh, breastfed babies, and skin health issues, make sure that she's on an all-around good nutritional supplement program like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Osteo FX and the, uh, and the Ultimate EFAs. Topically, you can use zinc oxide. It has a nice soothing effect on the skin. Also, if you can find, if you want to go to uh, truthtreatments.com, check out our Omega-6 Healing Cream. Fat-soluble vitamin C can also have a soothing effect on the skin. Um, I think I think that ought to cover you there, Andre. Anything else you want to ask? Awesome. Yeah. One more thing. Um, I've been I've been on lately something called uh, Mother Earth Minerals. They're they're basically water soluble vitamins or minerals. Um, okay. Got, and, we're running out of time here, real quick, Andre. Uh, yeah. They, they're it's basically angstrom sized particles of minerals. That's great. And I was just yes. curious what your beliefs are on that. They're awesome. They're awesome. And you always want your minerals nice and small. I like the colloidal, the plant-derived colloidal minerals because they've got, they're organic. They're from plants. But if you can do anything small in terms of minerals, that's the ionic minerals or anything like that, that's going to be in your interest. All right, we're just out of time, Andre. I apologize. Have yourself a beautiful day. Thanks for the kind words. All right, guys, we'll be back at you tomorrow with more awesome health information. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a beautiful, spectacular, awesome, wonderful day. Bye Long for now. Time to-